let's dive into GEMS by digitizing an analog map. We're going to work from a published paper map image, but it's essentially the same process as making new geology. Well, in, it's new geology, instead of a map image, we have field notes that have been scanned, we have air photos, we have topography, but it's the same thing. You're looking at an image and you're drawing lines on it. The processes are very similar. We'll do this in steps with breaks for discussion between each step. We'll start by assessing the source map, figuring out what we need, making an empty database, putting a map outline, a box to draw inside of, and begin digitizing contacts and making map unit polygons. Right now, I'm sitting at home in the west edge of Wenatchee in the center of Washington state, and I thought I'd work on something local. So we're gonna look at the geologic map of the Chihuahua Four Southeast Quadrangle by John Wetton, published in 1980 as a USGS open file report. Here's a view of part of the map. It's a pretty ugly thing. It was pretty clearly you know, done as a blueprint type process and then later scanned. It's aged in the library. Um, the nice thing is that the National Geologic Map Database has a geotiff and we don't need to georeference this image. To make life simple, we're gonna do the Southeast one ninth of the map so that there's a chance of getting through it in the next few minutes. The first step is to inventory what's on the map. What kinds of features are present? What feature classes will we need in the database to capture them? Um, we can see there are contacts. And interestingly, none of them are dotted or concealed, or, or, or dashed approximate. They're all uh, contacts, well-located. There are map unit polygons, and we've got several different units, um, QAL, QOAL, QLS, and then TCS, which is an Eocene conglomeratic sandstone of a jumpstick formation. And then there are these lines here, solid, dotted, dashed, solid, with ornament along it. And these are labeled, this is TTA, this one over here is TTE. These are tough beds. Um, and there's some question as to how they could be treated. Um, Tough beds like this, key beds, don't participate in map unit topology, thus they don't belong in contacts and faults. They could be stored in gems in either geologic lines or map unit lines. And the question is which is appropriate. And it's a matter of how they're defined. Geologic lines are identified by type and they're defined in the glossary table. On the paper map, you'd look for the definition of that line and the explanation of symbols. Map unit lines are lines that are map units and they're their meaning is defined in the description of map units table. Um, in the paper map, we'd see them in the DMU. On this map, these shale layers show up on the CMU, the correlation diagram, and they are listed on the shale layers, tough layers. They're listed as parts of the conglomeratic sandstone package. They're defined in the DMU, so they get stored in map unit lines in the GEMS database. We also have strike and dip measurements, a fair number of them, a lot of them quite hard to read. To capture these, we need four feature classes. We need contacts and faults and map unit polys. And these are required in any GEMS geologic map database. Um, we also need map unit lines and orientation points, which are as needed feature classes. Put them in when you need them. Here's our recipe. We're gonna make an empty database. We're gonna, by opening ArcMap, we're gonna add reference layers to uh, the map composition, including the scan of the, the map we're digitizing. We're gonna save our MXD file as, as, as map name dash edit.mxd. Um, my experience is that editing and plotting typically need different reference layers and different symbolization. Thus, I use two MXD files for any map I'm working on, one for editing, one for plotting. We're gonna run the create new database script. Um, then we're gonna add a map outline to it. Um, we're gonna transfer the map outline into contacts and faults, uh, fill out its attributes and get rid of the map outline. Then we're going to add a prepackaged layer file that gives us digitizing templates um, and begin digitizing the line work. We'll come back to this. So here is the scan of the Chihuahuan 4 Southeast Quadrangle. Um, I've added some re reference layers. Um, for example, here are scan USGS topos off of the Esri um, base map collection. And I happen to have LIDAR data for the area on my hard drive, so I added that also. 
Part of the reason for doing this is I get really nervous about where things are located, georeferencing, um, mine and others. In more than one occasion, I've found that stuff isn't where I thought it was. And so let's go look at the corner of this map right here. Turn the LIDAR off. The um, scan I made partially transparent. If we look at the base map, the scan topo maps, we can see the seam in here where the scan, this quadrangle was joined to this quadrangle, this one to this one, there's a seam in through here. Uh, the quadrangle boundaries are in NAD 27. Um, this is the NAD 83 tick, and it's about 90 some meters to the east northeast of the corner of the quad boundaries. And it's this displacement between NAD 83 and NAD 27 that is a bugaboo. So let's put the scanned georeference map on top of here. And hooray, that corner is roughly um, where the corner is in the base layer. We can also go look at the LIDAR. And I have a fair bit of faith that the LIDAR is where it's supposed to be. And we can turn this off and look, for example, at this little reentrant in here, in the valley wall. And yeah, again, it's about the right place. So I think the scan is properly georeferenced. We're OK proceeding. Um, the next step is to make an empty geodatabase. And so we want to open up the ArcMap toolbox, create a new database, go to the output workspace, and it's Chihuacan 4 Southeast. We're going to call this and ordinarily I would say copy the reference framework from the input base map. Um, but NAD27 is a bad actor for many people, so let's not do that. I'm going to copy it from the LIDAR data in here. And one of the LIDAR data sets is in NAD83 um, UTM10. And let's use that. Um, we need feature classes and elements that are beyond the standard required GEMS minimum. We figured out that we needed to have geologic lines, sorry, map unit lines, and orientation points. We don't want a cross section. We're not going to enable edit tracking. We're not going to use cartographic representations. We do want to add L type and PT type, and we'll see why shortly. And in general, we want the standard confidence values. Um, uh, certain and questionable added to the database also. Click OK, and it runs. It won't take very long. We can sit here and watch it. It'll tell you what it's doing um, to keep you entertained, but also uh, while coding this um, was nice and what was working and what wasn't. And if you get an error in this, uh, Evan and I, who have done most of the coding, would very much like to hear about it. And the best thing you can do is give us a screen grab of, of this output so we can see where the error occurred. One minute, eight seconds later, it's done. And we can close this window and um, close the toolbox for the moment. And we can add data to our map. Here's our database. And we want to add the contacts and faults and map unit lines feature classes to the map composition. They're empty, nothing shows. The next step is to make a map outline, have a box to draw inside it. And there's a tool here that makes that easy. The challenge is that map outlines are roughly rectangles, but in detail, they are not. They need lots of points to control them. Um, we want to know, oh, some windows here. We want to know where the, the box is going to be. And for that, we look at our map very conveniently. It's got a nice, even coordinates. The southeast longitude is west minus 120, 30 minutes, 0.5. Southeast latitude is 47.5. Um, seven and a half minutes is the full quadrangle width. Um, we're going to do two and a half minutes to get a ninth of the quad. But if we put this in here, it'll think that um, Values less than five are soon to be in degrees, so we'll get a two and a half degree box. So we need a value that is in um, decimal degrees. And for that, it's time for the calculator and 2.5 divided by 60 equals 
0 0.04167. And we don't care about tick spacing. The output is indeed um, NAD27, the output geodatabase. We can write this to the database we're building things in. Um, the output coordinate system, we want to use um, NAD83. Uh, UTM 10 and the scratch workspace. We have an empty folder in here. We're going to use that. And this should run. It's done. We should be able to open the catalog and uh, there's our map outline. We can add our map outline to the composition. And there it is as a thin red line. Let's make it a little thicker. We do not need our reference layer. That just slows us down. So the next step is to transfer this map outline to contacts and faults. And there are several ways to do it. Um, we can copy and paste. We can load. Uh, copy and paste works pretty well. So we want to make this um, editable. And select it, copy, paste. And we want to paste it into contacts and faults. Um, we can turn this off, and there it is in contacts and faults. Let's give it some attributes. So the type uh, is neat line. Uh, it's not concealed. We calculated its location, so we know exactly where it is. We're certain that it exists. Um, we're certain what it is. And at the moment, we don't care what the label or the symbol is. And let's leave the data source ID blank also for the time being. Now we've got a box. We've got something to digitize we're looking at. Um, let's make this easy. We're going to add a a layer of, of templates that allow us to digitize features without having to um, figure out too closely what all their attributes are. And we're going to go to add data and go back to the gems toolbox, which is living here and into the resources layer and find contacts in false 24K and add it. Um, contacts in false 24K references a contacts and faults layer, but it doesn't know which one. So there's a problem here. We need to click on one of the layers, data, repair data source, and go back to our new database and select the contacts and faults layer. Everything now knows where it's from. These layers, each one is visualizing a different attribute of contacts and faults. This one's telling us what the L type is. This one's being symbolized on the basis of existence confidence. Uh, this one, identity confidence, um, and so on. And the nice thing about this layer also, let's move in and zoom a little bit in here. If we decide to start digitizing, Let's see, we're editable, okay. Um, we want uh, create features window. Um, we want to remove contacts and faults from here. We want to remove map unit <sighs> lines. Stop editing. Yes. Ah, there are templates. So if we look at one of these here, it's got a name, it's a line, 
it makes a new feature if we use it. It's got a type of contact. It's not concealed. It's got a certain uh, existence and identity confidence values. Has a location confidence meters value of 100. And it's um, uh, referenced as an L type of contact of 100 meters. That's why we see it here on this menu. So I can take this. Um, now, let's back up. This is a 24,000 scale map. These are all certainly located contacts. Interestingly, if we put the base map in, you may be able to see here that the contact on the scan does not line up exactly with the contact on the underlying uh, scan 24K. I think what this is showing is a measure of the distortion involved in making a map uh, printing it on paper, storing it in the library, and then scanning it again. So features have been shifted by the, the history of this map. And I'm reluctant to say that we know where things are within one millimeter map scale in this. So I'm going to digitize these all as having a 30 meter location confidence meters. And let's start by digitizing this contract right here. We can start, click. And here we hit our contact. We do the next line. And as you may notice, um, snapping is enabled. This is the ArcMap configuration we set up in the first bit here earlier. I know this is really exciting to watch. I won't bore you too much more. Um, I can turn on the LCM layer and here gray, gray halos showing us on the map what a 30 meter location compass meter value looks like. Um, it may be that I'm being too conservative and we can call these 20 meter LCMs. They're almost certainly not 10. Um, if we don't like this, we could, um, Open the attribute table and change these values. That 10. And the halos are skinnier. I do not think those lines are that well located. Let's stick with 30. So let's see, edit, undo database row change, and edit, undo database row change. We're back at 30. We have the map boundary and this contact that makes a closed polygon and this contact that makes a closed polygon. We can make polygons now. Um, before we do that, I'd like to see what we have selected here. So let's uh, um, zoom to selected features. If we build polygons from this, um, well, let's do it. Make polys. Oh, we need to have polygon features in here, to, a polygon layer to make polys into it. So let's add map unit polys. Now we can build polys. And this will build polys and map unit polys. And we do not want that polygon. Um, that was sort of the, the local universe. We can um, keep deleting those when we ever we build polygons, or we can chop the map boundary up in little pieces. So when we grab it, we don't grab all of it. I hear we want. Okay, that'll work. Let's do one more line here, piece of a line. Again, we're going to call this a 30 meter contact. We can select the map boundary, select contact, build polys. Okay, that polygon, look at its attributes. That is like everything else in here, map unit TCS. It's like this one. 
and select this one. Um, let's do one other map unit here, one other polygon. And again, I want my, temp my template, 30 meters. Now, it's not gonna snap because we have not enabled snap to sketch. If we enable that, we can connect to the line we just drew. We didn't, so let's connect this now and it'll snap. There's a closed polygon. You can select that, construct polygons, that one, QOAL. We can now, Double click on this, go to the symbology field, symbolize it by unique values of map unit. And let's pick some colors that make sense to us. That's a nice Eocene. So I'm gonna call it green and fill color um, orange. Eventually we'll color the map based on the symbol field. But while we're building the map, that's inconvenient. It's not easy to transfer symbol values from the DMU to here. So in the early stages of building a map, I typically symbolize directly on map unit and change it later. Um, I'm gonna stop recording this and go digitize the rest of the map and we'll come back later.